Best of all, Vicki is living her dream life in Sher Sherwood, Oregon, on her farm dream acres with her husband Trevor and their sons Nash and Brock. So welcome, Vicki. Thank you for having me, Tara. I am so happy to be here tonight, ladies. What an awesome, awesome time. And I began to think about what's already been going on in Hollywood. And it is so exciting to me to see the move of the Spirit here. And I want to be where Holy Spirit is. So I'm coming down to bring my sound and to bring the kingdom down here. Because I believe that as we speak and we declare things and we share things, that we're actually speaking into the atmosphere, not just into one another. Amen. So I'm so happy to be here tonight. And I'm gonna, I think tonight the theme really is testimony. The awakening that my husband and I have had. Because I've been a Christian for 25 years, but I've been awake for four. Amen. So tonight, I'm going to be sharing with you restoring communication for impact. Now, our company is called Restoring Order. I'm an organizing expert, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story and the places I found myself and the things that God has done. And I feel that this is a message from the heart of the Father to you tonight. I asked him what, he, what he's doing in this region, what he's doing in you, what he wants to share with you tonight. And so I, it's my hope and prayer that this will be a love letter to your hearts. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about how I was building an empire, building a kingdom. And then I'm going to share with you how we awoke to the kingdom. I'm going to tell you a little bit about garden living, communication, and I'm going to give you three keys before we leave each other this evening for heavenly impact. So in 1999, I established my company, Restoring Order. You know, I, I began as a professional organizer, and, and people say, well now, why, what got you into organizing, you know, what qualifies you to do that? Well, I was getting in my granny's drawers and organizing her things when I was little, and I would say to my mom, can I empty everything out of the kitchen and like reorganize it? <laughs> so other kids are like dyeing their hair blue, and I'm saying, can I organize the kitchen? <laughs> and really what I am is I'm a grown-up Nancy Drew. <laughs> I mean, I'm a detective. I'm a treasure hunter. I like to figure out what's broken and fix it. That's why I love business. And I love getting to the root cause of what's broken and helping restore it. So I began the company in 1999. By 2003, I had hired employees and had to figure out how to be an employer and how to have a training program because I just got so busy I couldn't, I couldn't take any more clients. So I began hiring and training professional organizers. It is actually a real profession for people like me. <laughs> And my mom said, you're going to do what? Which translates mean, are you going to be living in my basement? <laughs> An ABC affiliate called. And they just looked me up in the phone book. Remember when people use the yellow pages? <laughs> and they looked me up in the phone book and they said, hey, we're going to do a segment tomorrow on organizing your office. Could you do it? And I said, yes, I can. And so I remember I was wearing like this little two-piece suit and little dress. And my knees were knocking. I remember, I remember the little dress I was wearing. And I did that makeover on live TV. And then I said, by the way, you know, maybe I should come back and do your host's office. Well, they loved that idea. So pretty soon before you know it, I had a monthly segment on morning television in Portland. And I was one of the first uh, professional organizers around the country to actually hire employees, much less be in the media. And I, I just feel like I got into the media because I'm a possibilitarian. And when people say, can you do this? I say, yes, I can. And I knock on the knees and figure out how to do it. All right. <laughs> Come on. And so I just started doing morning television. And pretty soon, I had done every room you can think of. And I started uh, streaming the video on my website. 
which for me is pretty progressive, because I'm not the most technological person, but I knew I should get this media out there. So I streamed it on my website, and, and then HGTV called. And when HGTV called, they said, we have a little show we're doing called Mission Organization, and we want to know if you can be on the show. And I said, yes, I can. <laughs> So I got on a plane, and I, this is before children, and I flew to, uh, out to, to uh, Delaware, actually, and I, I filmed a couple shows for them, and then pretty soon before you know it, I was a regular on Mission Organization. Now, along the way, I had written two books with Harvest House Publishers, because a woman came up to me at a conference, and she said, you are a book. And I said, I know, I have got a lot in me. And she said, I can help you write a book, and I said, that's amazing, but no, I need to write it. I need to write it. She said, well, I really want to introduce you to some people. See, that's what favor will do. God Amen. just brought me along. And, and before you know it, I'm sitting at the table at the end of this long conference table at Harvest House Publishers, and I walked out with a two-book deal. And all I did was show them some of my videos for a mission organization. <laughs> and, you know, and I, I've always loved to write, so I wrote these books. And I know whoever said it was a birthing over here, it is a birthing. <laughs> Oh my word. And I also birthed eight other things because in the process, my husband and I built a product line of office organizing products. Because I would go out to my clients and paper is the number one problem people have. They're so frustrated with it. Who isn't? And I would say to my husband, do you know, or at the time we were dating, and I would say, you know, uh, people need good paper sorters because all there is is those junky black trays, you know? So you'd set them up and they're just terrible looking and they crack and break and, you know. And so I said, wouldn't it be neat if there was this product where you could like have movable parts and you could customize it because good products should be like good organizing, customizable. And you know, they're really motivated when you're dating. <laughs> and my husband is a craftsman. I'm married to MacGyver. And so this product showed up on my doorstep and it had restoring order and glaze and nut. And it was the very first product line. And so pretty soon, we were married. We met married within like nine months. We met on a cruise. <laughs> and so we birthed this line of office organizing products uh, that we called the Reclaim Your Office Collection here. So pretty soon, I had two books. I had this product line. I had all this stuff going on. Um, I was on morning TV. I mean, it was just getting nutty. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm getting into this. Move over, Martha. Vicky's coming up. <laughs> you know, I this I get this. I, I want more of this. So I started building an empire. Because you know what? I wanted to build an organization that was professional. I wanted to professionalize professional organizing. At the time, it was a bit of a cottage industry. And I want to show people that you could build something for God that would be excellent. Because you know what? I would look around at Christendom and some of the product that's put out by Christendom, and I would say, I don't want to be associated with that. Mm, come on. Yeah. I saw cheesy, I saw cheap, and that was not going to be me. I was going to build an organization that was going to glorify God. <laughs> so here I was, building, 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 getting on Fox Business News, being publishing books, being on media tours. In the process, I had two babies hauled my breast pump across America on book tour. I mean, it got nutty. And you know, I, 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 right about 2007, I started getting really antsy because nothing was happening beyond this like critical mass. Like I, I felt like I hit a ceiling and I couldn't go any further. And I, I started getting like painful. Like, like have you ever felt like you're built for the Olympics but you're stuck in gym class. <laughs> that is totally how I felt. Like the, the consulting practice was going great, the media was going great, but like, I just want someone to discover me. Will you hurry up and discover me? <laughs> because this is taking a lot of effort. And so what I realized is a plan without many advisors fails. So I hired advisors. I hired a media company out of Nashville, flew them out to meet with me. I, on book tour, I had met a um, uh, public relations firm out of Washington, D.C. I hired them. You remember Bob Vila, kind of one of the very first lifestyle uh, personalities, a handyman guy. I hired his agent. So let's see. Um, for the agent, I probably spent about $5,000. And with him, I got a couple of phone calls. With the PR firm, I spent about $20,000. And 
they got me a couple mentions, and you know how valuable those are, mentions. Seriously, have you ever opened a magazine and gone, I have got to work with that person. I need to discover that person. That's what, that's all I got is a couple more mentions. Real simple here, Better Homes and Gardens there, just a few more mentions, $20,000. Then, the, uh, the, the company that I had hired to help me with the strategic planning and launch this big breakthrough, this big brand, that was about $45,000 later. I had capitalized my company, and $75,000 later, I had nothing to show for it. And that got my attention. Because God knows what it's going to take to get our attention. Mm -hmm. And I was mad. I was like, God, you know what? I am trying to build this for you. I look around, and like, what I see is not that great. And I mean, your people need to be at the top, right? Oh, God? And what, what is going on here? Do you not love me? Do you not love me as much as you love everyone else? Because I'm trying to do something for you here. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm, you know, having babies. And, um, and someone had invited me locally in Oregon to the Christian Chamber of Commerce. And I thought to myself, that is the last place I want to go. I want to go to another group because everyone needs another networking group. And I need a, a, a Christian networking group. So, because frankly, I, I played in that sandbox and I got sand in my eyes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I've been hurt. So, but I went one time because I just felt like for some reason I was like bugged to go. So I went and there I heard a man. And he began to teach on biblical entrepreneurship. Mm. And as he spoke about biblical entrepreneurship, there was something on him that I had never seen before. There was an authority on him. There was a power on him. I now know it's anointing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that then. I lived under a rock, I'm pretty sure, for 23 years. And I, there's something on him. And I was like, I need to know what is on him. So he started teaching this biblical entrepreneurship class, which I took the next day. And as I started going through this material, the Lord just said, all the answers that you've been looking for are here. And as I opened the pages, this phrase kept jumping off the page like God was using a yellow highlighter on this one phrase and it was the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And I thought, well now I know what that is. I'm a good Christian girl. I know my word. I taught Bible study. I mean, I was the good Pollyanna girl. So, but the kingdom of God, it, well I know what that is. That's heaven. Come to find out, it is not heaven. And my husband and I began, back in 2009, an awakening that has not stopped. And I have come to discover, and I want to share with you tonight, what has made, what has interrupted my life, what has turned every single upside down thing right side up, and what has righted everything that was out of order. Because that's the God we serve. So I began to start reading the word again and getting into it and reading Matthew and reading things like the kingdom. It's a net. It's a pearl. It's a mustard seed. It's a treasure buried in a field. It's leaven. It's a man going on a journey. A man who sowed good seed in his field. It's the story of ten virgins. It's a king. I began to look at those and go, well, now I know what those mean. Well, now, wait a minute. No, that's kind of confusing. Maybe I don't know what that means. And I began to realize that maybe there was a secret kingdom. Maybe when Jesus said there will be people who will not see and will not hear, maybe that was me. Maybe I had missed something big. And as I began to understand what the kingdom is, I'm going to share with you what it is and what it is not. Because maybe you're like me. Maybe you love the Lord and you want to do media and you want to do business on God's behalf. But maybe you have not yet discovered the greatest story of all time. Because I want to share with you that what I had discovered is what that I had been saved from something. My sin. But I had not yet been saved into anything. So... I was camped at the cross. But Jesus paid the ultimate price to get me into the kingdom. 
And I'm going to unpack for you what that means. What the kingdom is not, it is not just about God saving us from our sin. I mean, if you think about that, that doesn't even just make sense that God's going to send us here and then just redeem us for our sins and then we're, we're stuck. The kingdom is not a religion. It is not a group. It is not an assembly. It is not domination. It is not churchification. It is not programatization. And it most certainly is not institutionalization. The kingdom isn't about any of those things. And it is not heaven as a destination. But the kingdom of God is a government. It is a government. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, the word declares. It is mentioned at at least 93 times in the word of God. 93 times from the beginning to the end. It is God's plan upon the earth. And by the way, it is the principal subject that Jesus taught about. The kingdom. He didn't teach about himself. He didn't teach about salvation. He taught the kingdom of God. One time, he, Jesus preached, or he spoke, he didn't preach, he spoke about salvation. And it was when Nicodemus came to him in the middle of the night and said, Lord, Lord, how do I get into this kingdom you've been teaching about? How do I get in? Salvation is the way in to the kingdom. You see, the kingdom of God is the unseen spirit of God coming into the unseen places in man, in the seen body coming on the scene. It's his government. Jesus said the kingdom of God is within. The kingdom is the Holy Spirit of God indwelling in us, going where we go. That's why we're called the temple of the Holy Spirit. So where I go, his government goes. Because the Spirit of God dwells in me. The kingdom changes everything. Because when we begin to understand that God has a plan upon the earth, and He actually not only invited you into it, He destined you for it. It changes things because you begin to realize who you are. He literally rewound the clock and took care of how much sin? All of it. He did it all. And he redeemed us to be for the fall. Which means, my friends, garden living is available for us. See, we wonder, we think, now, where is all that abundance and prosperity and righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost that I'm supposed to be experiencing? Where is that in my life? It's in the kingdom. See, I didn't know where it could be found. I read the word. I saw the promises of God. But I did not understand that it is only accessible when you enter in. Girls, I was sitting at the door, worshiping the door. And Jesus is like, get out in here, girl. This is where I built you for, the kingdom. Amen. And the kingdom of God changes everything. Now that I understand the kingdom, I understand now why the disciples were beat up and dragged out of towns and left for dead. Because the kingdom is an offensive gospel. The kingdom is an interruptive gospel. That's why it's called a yeast. It will take over your life. And that is exactly how God planned it. Because we are his offspring. We are his royal daughters and sons. And see, I want to I want to share with you that Trevor and I, once we have come into this revelation of the kingdom, we've begun to understand that that garden that Adam and Eve enjoyed with God, that's available for us today. We don't have to wait to heaven to enjoy that. It's not just what we've been saved from, but what we've been saved into. The word declares, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us, which means return to friendship with God. And he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He gave you the ministry of helping other people return to friendship with God. We are like friend ambassadors. We're like, hey, I've got this great friend. Come on in. That's what we have been given. We are ambassadors of friendship. 
Because you see, the original state, the original state that God planned, we can see in Genesis. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life. And the man became a living being. No, God breathed his own breath into man. And he became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in the east in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. And then one of my favorite, Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took the man and he put them, him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Other translations say to guard it, to dress it. So, and work, by the way, when God put Adam in the garden, work is the same root word as worship. Avodah. Same, the Hebrew word, the same root word for work as it is for worship. So the, that, so Ad, he put Adam in, a, in the garden to tend it, and that was his worship. And don't you know that our work is our worship unto the Lord? So if we're under our work, if we're just living for a paycheck, if we're just trying to scrape by, get a job, get somebody to pay us for our talents, we have missed the boat because we have been deployed from heaven where we are seated in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus as it declares in Ephesians 2.6. We are seated with him in the heavenlies and we have been sent. And look here. Adam and Eve, they walked with God in the cool of the day and they knew his sound. What intimacy. Have you ever been in a house with someone and you've heard them walking and you know which family member it is? Just by their steps. See, that's what Adam and Eve had with the Father. They had total open access communication with him, tender intimacy with him. They knew his sound. And that is what Jesus has restored for us, that communication with heaven, that communication with headquarters. We have been returned to the garden. And you know, the garden you is really somewhat spectacular. The garden you is made in his image and likeness. And see, I'd read all these scriptures before. I knew my word. I mean, I was the kind of Christian, like, when I got saved, I got radically saved. I would put my Bible on my desk at school. I wore the shirt that said, Property of Jesus Christ. I'd always been an evangelist. Maybe that's why I didn't have a lot of friends. <laughs> Good thing we had a swimming pool. Get those friends back in the summertime. But, you know, um, what I really have noticed is that when I came into the kingdom, it's like these scales fell off my eyes. And all of the word began to come together like a big connect the dots. Now just listen to this. This is who you are. This is who God says you are. You have been told to multiply. And that doesn't just mean have babies. That means to multiply after your own kind. And who you are is a citizen of heaven. Who you are is righteous and holy and, and beautiful. A work of art. You are from the royal household, the word declares. Literally, your family is royalty. You are from, your daddy is the king. You are seated in the heavenlies. You have traded in condemnation for righteousness. You don't have to live in sin anymore because that's not your nature anymore. You are righteous. You are friends, Jesus declares, not slaves. You are a friend of God. Your sons, and you have been sent. This is really alarming. Jesus Christ said, as my Father has sent me, I'm sending you. And then he says in John 14, 12, you will do greater things than I. Now, how can we do that as women in business, in the marketplace, as women in media, if we are apologizing? For our faith, if we are worried about what people think, if we have issues and junk in the trunk of our soul. See, we God is inviting us to get that stuff out so that we can walk as He is. Because that is why He sent us. We are equipped with the Holy Spirit and supernatural power. You know, signs and wonders accompany the apostles and they should accompany us. It's the marketing department of the kingdom. <laughs> and you know what? Here's what I think is really sad. I think the enemy of our souls has a very, very low marketing budget. 
And let me tell you why. Because he has the body of Christ. And we so often have our head, too often we have our head down. We are full of maybe unforgiveness, frustration. Like I was sharing with you earlier about me. I was feeling like, come on, God. We're, we got, they look at us and they say, well, you're depressed, oppressed, overwhelmed. You've got all the same problems I have, but you're more uptight. <laughs> Why do I want what you have? See, when you understand the kingdom and you take the full pie, not just salvation, but you take authority, you take power, you take the fact that you are a daughter of the king. You get that stuff out and you get to shed that stuff. You know Jesus is the original Cash for Clunkers program? He instituted the exchange program. And we can take advantage of the exchange program and trade that junk for the truth. And when we do that, we become living epistles. We become, and that is my prayer for you, that you have become a living epistle. That people just, just like with Jesus, they want to be in your presence. They want to be near you because you carry the presence of God. That's what we are to carry. We're to carry his presence into the earth. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what I feel like his message was for you today that I was to bring to you is that it has always, always, always since Adam and Eve been God's will that communication would begin with communing with him with the Father. But a lot of times we don't know how to do that because we haven't discovered the kingdom, which my husband and I, we like to think of it as the garden. So I want to invite you to get on into the garden because Jesus rewound the clock. He took care of all that sin. You don't have to live in that anymore. You don't have to operate in that because who you are is a royal daughter of the King. Who you are is forgiven and perfected and holy, you know, holy means set apart. And you're sent. I mean, think of it. He created the whole earth. He created this, and then he put us into it. And what did he say? He gave us dominion over the birds of the air, the fish, the fish of the sea, and everything that creeps along the ground. And I think that includes the airwaves, ladies. He has given us dominion, and he has sent us, and he has sent us to colonize, to make earth more like heaven. We have not been sent so that we can try to get a job and make our way. And like I was trying to do, claw my way to what I perceived to be the top. Because I'm here to tell you that when I traded my agenda and my kingdom for his kingdom, things got hot. <laughs> because I wasn't, trying to, I wasn't trying to build a business for God anymore. Now I got into his business. And I discovered the royal checkbook. <laughs> and I can write checks on daddy's account now. And where I go, he has sent me. Because see, now I say, Father, am I supposed to go there? And when I, he has sent me, he has prepared the way because he, Jesus leads us in triumphal procession. And so he has sent me. And, and it begins that we have to commune with him in the garden. But what does that look like? I mean, it doesn't look like more religion. What does communing really look like? I'm going to share with you, for me, it looks like walking down this country lane near, near our farm. It looks like doing what I'm born to do. And you know, when I'm sitting and I'm writing my monthly newsletter, Restore, I literally don't write anything until Father gives me what to say. And, and when I write, it, it's like... It is like I'm tapping into the river that flows from the throne. And I just weep. And I'm like, or sometimes when I speak and I am hearing things from heaven, I'm like, somebody write that down. That was good. When you are doing what you are born to do, and you're no longer striving on the hamster wheel, trying to get somewhere, trying to be somebody, trying to make a way for yourself. See, when you realize that you are a kingdom citizen and that the angels have been sent to take care of you, then you begin to understand that the angels have prepared the way. And where you go, you are sent. That's how I commune. And I have a lot of stories of, about what comes from communing in our life. 
And I know we have a short time together today, but I want to say to you that as we have begun to do this, as my husband and I, remember I'm married to MacGyver, you know how he communes? He builds bows and arrows. He pounds on metal. He's a blacksmith. He's an electrician. He creates things. God gives him brilliant, brilliant revelation. And see, here's the thing. God wants to do that for every one of you. I believe that all the finest technologies and all the finest media should be coming from spirit-filled people who are in the garden hearing from the Father. We're communing with Him. We're getting these downloads and then we're bringing them into the earth realm. And when people say, where did you get that? I'm going to say, I have supernatural sources. <laughs> right? Because when we are communing with Him, we should be getting, imagine the books that should come out of the people in this room. The speeches that should come out, they should pierce the hearts of man. That is not just back in the disciples' time, it's here and now. Your motion pictures, your songs, they should move people because Father has sent them through you, through these gates, through you into the earth. And see, our, our life looks a whole lot different now. Trevor and I live on a farm where we run restoring order together. Our children are involved in our business. We hold meetings in our barn. We disciple people. We help them come into the kingdom. Because you know what? Even after you wake up, you got to stay awake. Because <laughs> this is not natural to how I've been living before. I had, to, I had to have people exhort into me, this is who you are. And I have to walk in it, and now the best thing is when you get to become part of the Pay It Forward program. Because mm -hmm. you know, according to Isaiah 61, we are oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. Ladies, our lives should be sp splendid. We should be the fragrance of life. And when we are in the garden with Him, that's going to be natural. You don't have to try to get it. Don't. A lot of people feel like, oh, great. See, you know how I felt when I discovered the kingdom? Joyful and irritated all at once. I'm like, are you kidding me? I've been in the wrong program this whole time? You mean I ran, I put a lot of miles on that treadmill. And now I've got to start all over? You know, Holy Spirit whispered to me. He said, no, baby. He said, as you, as you faithfully let me pull out all that wrong wiring in your mind, the original wiring is already there. So just let him pull that wrong wiring out so that you can get communing with the Father. Because that's really what I wanted to bring to you tonight is an invitation to return to the garden, that, to what Jesus saved us into, not just from. And to reclaim the garden you, the one who is sent, the one who is a daughter of the king, and part of reclaiming the garden you, Trevor and I have discovered, is we have to get those lies and that captivity out of our own life so that we can operate on behalf of our Father. So that as I'm in His business, He can trust me as He sends me into the earth to do what He's told me to do in the secret place. we got to get the junk out of the trunk. And there is a way to do that, to participate in His exchange program. Because really his plan was this. You ladies are his references. You're his references. When the earth looks at us, they're going to say, that's what God must look like. That's what God must look like. We're here to represent headquarters. So people see us. They see our country. And our country is heaven. It's not just where we're going. It is where we're from. Remember how the word says you're a citizen of heaven? God finally pulled the scales off my eyes once I came into the kingdom and I realized your citizenship is what your passport reads. It's where you're from. You are from heaven. And God sent you here. He sent you here. And as we do this, as Christian women in media, we get to have, these be, have our antenna up and just receive from heaven. Receive from the Father. We, he, he, wants to, he wants to take us to Holy Spirit Hospital first. I spent some time in Holy Spirit Hospital. I know you have too. I love your story. We have spent some time there. And as you spend time in Holy Spirit Hospital, then 
I, and I'm so grateful he didn't launch me when I wanted to be launched. I would have done damage to myself. When we go to Holy Spirit Hospital and we're with him in the garden, we can begin to transmit. We're these little transmitters. And we get to transmit his will, his ways, his wisdom. And you know, as the garden knew, you are a totally unique medium. There are things you can do that I could never do. There are people you could reach I can never reach. And I actually need you and you need me. See, I asked the Lord one time, I said, why does your word declare that we are oaks of righteousness? Remember that Nancy Drew and me coming out? Why, why is it oaks, God? And he said, because oaks are is a very hard wood and it will break if it's planted by itself. But when we're together and we're just being who we are and I'm being who I am, you're being who you are, we sway when the winds come. See, we're planted together. God's plan is unity. And you know what's interesting? Out of communion with our Father. Not only are we going to get to transmit His will into the earth, but we're going to be in unity with one another. I'm going to see the glory in you, and I want to get that out to the world. And you're going to see the glory in me, and you want to get that out to the world. That's how we planned it. It's a beautiful symphony. <clears throat> so as we end, I just want to encourage you that we are called to have heavenly impact. Heavenly impact. Because, not because we know about God, not because we know about Him, because we've spent time with Him in the garden. See, I commune with Him when I'm speaking. I commune with Him when I'm writing. I commune with Him when I'm walking and I'm looking. God does a lot with me with nature. I commune with Him when I'm with my children, putting them to bed at night. You know, I really believe that God wants us to, you know how you can, there's a scent of your loved ones on their pillow. I think that's what God wants with us, that we would know his scent. <coughs> that we know his scent. We know his footsteps. We know and we carry that presence with us. Because it's that presence that was on the disciples that healed people. It's that presence that changes things, that has tectonic movement that accomplishes things in the supernatural, and that is your destiny. God sent every one of you and you to do the things that only you can do. And, to, and that's what media is, to transmit the garden you into the earth. Because the earth is groaning for management, and you are the solution. Amen. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being with you. Walk alone, I have a Savior who walks beside me everywhere I go. My heart rejoices in His loving faith.